This is part of the Overkill series where we use overpowered tools to prove simple or well-known facts from mathematics. Here we're gonna look at the Pythagorean theorem. So that says that if we've got a right triangle with side lengths A and B, hypotenuse length C, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We're gonna use four main tools to prove this in our crazy method. The first one will be this Pythagorean theorem is equivalent to the Pythagorean identity involving the sine function and the cosine function. That's pretty easy to see given the fact that sine theta in our setup right here will be A over C and cosine theta will be B over C. So that makes A squared plus B squared equals C squared equivalent to A squared over C squared plus B squared over C squared equals one. Okay, so I think that's enough to say about this. So our next two tools, which we also will not prove carefully, involve the power series for sine and cosine. So these are the Maclaurin series or the Taylor series expanded at the origin. So we've got sine theta is the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n over two n plus one factorial theta to the two n plus one. And then we can use that and take the derivative to get the power series for cosine theta. So that ends up being the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n over two n factorial theta to the two n. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna use these as tools. This is something you'd see like in a calculus class. So we're not gonna prove these either. The next tool which we will establish is about some binomial coefficients. So we've get, got this sum as k goes from zero to n of two n choose two k is the same thing as the sum as k goes from one to n of two n choose two k minus one, which is equal to two to the power of two n minus one. So let's go ahead and see how this goes. So I'm gonna consider the binomial expanded, so x plus one to the two n, and then by the definition of binomial coefficients, I see that this is the sum as k goes from uh, zero to two n of two n choose k x to the k. Now, I'm first going to do one thing, and that's going to set x equal to 1 and see what that gives us. So that's going to give us 1 plus 1 to the 2n. In other words, 2 to the 2n equals the sum k goes from 0 to 2n of 2n choose k, which is that after evaluating at x equals 1. Now I'm going to also set x equal to negative one and see what we get. So that's gonna give us zero on the left-hand side of the equation. Then on the right-hand side of the equation, we'll have an alternating sum. So this will be the sum as k goes from zero to two n of minus one to the k, two n choose k. So I replaced x with minus one there. Now what I wanna do is expand this out into two series, one with all the even terms and one with all the odd terms. So I'm gonna write it like this as first. So I'll write the sum k equals zero to two n of two n choose k, where here I'm just summing all over all of the even terms. So I no longer need a minus one to the k. Then from that, I'm going to subtract this sum as k goes from one to two n minus one of two n choose k, where in this case, I'm summing over all of the odd terms. So I no longer need a minus one to the k because that's just identically equal to minus one in this case. So now I'm gonna simultaneously move one of these to the other side of the equation while I re-index. So I will re-index this one by sending k to 2k, and I'll re-index this one by sending k to 2k minus one, and then I'll also take this and add it over to the left-hand side of the equation. So that's gonna give me this sum as k goes from one to n of 2n choose 2k minus one, so that's what we get after re-indexing, equals the sum as k goes from zero to two n of two n choose two k. So that's what we get from this other bit. So again, these two things, their difference is zero, so that means they have to be exactly the same, but re-indexing turned it into this. But that's almost everything that we need over here. Now we need that the value of these is equal to two n minus one. 
So that's not too hard from this up here. So notice if we sum these together, we're going to get the right hand side of this equation. But if they're equal, then if we sum them together, then we get twice their total value. So what that tells us is that twice their total value is equal to two to the two n. So that means their value one at a time is one half two to the two n or two to the two n minus one, which is exactly what we needed. And now we're ready to move into our main result. So again, we'll do this by proving that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one using the power series for sine and cosine. So I'm gonna first focus on the sine squared part. So sine squared is going to be this power series, n goes from zero to infinity, minus one to the n over two n plus one factorial times theta to the two n plus one, and then we're gonna take all of that and square it. Okay, so that's actually a little bit tricky, so maybe we wanna recall something called the Cauchy formula for a product of two series. And that says that if we take the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of a sub n times the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of b sub n, so that's the product of these two series, we get the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of the sum as k goes from zero to n of a sub k, b sub n minus k. So again, this is the sometimes called the Cauchy product of two series. So here, we're going to want to link, things, link these two things up, but the two series that we're multiplying are the same. So that means we can use uh, a n equals b n equals this coefficient here, minus one to the n over two n plus one factorial theta to the two n plus one. Okay, so let's see what that gives us for sine squared. So that tells us that sine squared is equal to the sum, n goes from zero to infinity, of the sum, k goes from zero to n, of a sub k, so a sub k is gonna be minus one to the k over two k plus one factorial times theta to the two k plus one, b sub n minus k, so that's gonna be minus one to the n minus k, 2n minus 2k plus 1 factorial, theta to the 2n minus 2k plus 1. Good. The next thing that I want to notice is that I can take the product of these two theta terms and the dependence on k will disappear. So that means I can factor it out of the inner sum. And then I can do the same thing with this alternating bit. So again, the k dependence will disappear and I can factor it out of the inner sum. So that's gonna give me this sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n, theta to the two n plus two. And then inside that, I have this sum as k goes from zero to n of one over two k plus one factorial times two n minus two k plus one factorial. So that's what I have for sine squared so far. So I'll go ahead and bring that up and then we'll move on to the next step. So on the last board, we ended up at the following spot. So we've got sine squared theta equals the sum as n goes from zero to infinity, minus one to the n, theta to the two n plus two. And then inside that sum, we have a finite sum. The sum as k goes from zero to n of one over two k plus one factorial, two n minus two k plus one factorial. Okay, great. So the next thing that I wanna do is realize that this sum over here can be written as the sum of some binomial coefficients. So let's go ahead and see how that would work. So notice if I multiply the numerator of this by two n plus two factorial, then I've obviously changed something, but if I divide the outside by two n plus two factorial, then I haven't changed anything at all. So let's see what that gives me. So now I've got this sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n, theta to the two n plus two over two n plus two factorial. And then inside of that, I have the sum k equals zero to n, 
of, now we can realize that fraction as a binomial coefficient. That is exactly 2n plus 2 choose 2k plus 1. So what we can do now is re-index this a little bit. And we want to re-index it so that we start at n equals 1. And that will allow us to see that this is exactly something like this guy over here. So if I re-index this to start at n equals 1, I'm going to replace n with n minus 1. So notice if n minus 1 is 0, then n is equal to 1. So that means I've re-indexed to start at n equals 1. So now this is the sum, n goes from 1 to infinity, of minus 1 to the n plus 1. Really n minus 1, but the parity is all that matters there. And then theta to the 2n instead of 2n plus 2 over 2n factorial, again, instead of 2n plus 2 factorial. And now this sum is the sum gate k goes from 1 to n of 2n choose 2k minus 1. Again, by our re-indexing here, because we're kind of simultaneously re-indexing the k part. So k goes to k minus 1 to match the re-indexing of the n part. Okay, good. But now we know that this thing right here sums to 2 to the 2n minus 1 by our original tool. So that means we can rewrite this as the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 theta to the 2n over 2n factorial times 2 to the 2n minus 1. Okay, great. So let's maybe go ahead and bring that to the top and then we'll work on the cosine term. So after a bunch of work, we got this series expansion for sine squared. So it's the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the n plus 1 over 2n factorial. And then we have theta to the 2n, 2 to the 2n minus 1. Now let's do something similar with cosine squared theta, but we'll be a little quicker with the steps in this one. So this is going to be the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the n over 2n factorial theta to the 2n, and then we're taking that and squaring it. So using the Cauchy formula for the product of two series, that's going to give us this sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of the sum as k goes from 0 to n. And now we've got this indexed at k times that thing indexed at n minus k. So in other words, minus 1 to the k over 2k factorial theta to the 2k and then minus 1 to the n minus k over 2n minus 2k factorial theta to the 2n minus 2k. Great. Now we're going to play the same game that we did before. So we'll take these theta terms and combine them and notice that gets rid of the k dependence. We'll also take these minus 1 to the k and n minus k terms, combine them, that gets rid of the k dependence. So that's going to give us a sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, a minus 1 to the n, a theta to the 2n, after factoring out all of that stuff that doesn't depend on k. And then inside of this, we've got a finite sum. k goes from 0 to n of, let's see what it is. It's 1 over 2k factorial times 2n minus 2k factorial. Now let's do the same thing that we did on the last board with sine, and that is visualize that as a binomial coefficient. And we can best do that by multiplying the numerator by 2n factorial, but that means we need to divide out here by 2n factorial. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. That's going to give us this sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n. Now we have theta to the 2n over 2n factorial, but we can rewrite this whole thing as 2n choose 2k. So we've got the sum as k goes from 0 to n of 2n choose 2k, but earlier we proved that that was 2 to the 2n minus 1, so I'm just going to replace that with 2 to the 2n minus 1. Good. So the next thing that I want to do is pretty simple. I'm just going to take out the first term because if we take out the first term, then we have a sum going from 1 to infinity, just like sine. But notice the first term is equal to 1. So we have 1 plus the sum 
as n goes from one to infinity of all of the same stuff. So minus one to the n, theta to the two n over two n factorial, and then two to the two n minus one. All right, we're gonna bring that value of cosine squared up and then we're pretty much done. Now we've got our series expansion for sine squared and cosine squared, and now we're pretty much done. All that I'm gonna do now is take this minus one to the n plus one and factor a minus one out of there. So I can factor a minus one out of there by replacing n minus, sorry, n plus one with n and putting a minus sign here. And now we can see that these things are essentially the same, except cosine has a leading one. So that means when we do sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, we're gonna get one plus the sum of all of this stuff minus the sum of all of this stuff, where this comes from these coefficients here. But notice if you add and subtract the same thing, then that's gonna be zero. So in other words, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And that's exactly what we needed to show in order to establish this Pythagorean theorem using power series. And that's a good place to stop.